You want to see the experience, comic culture, and sales. Streaming live daily to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Hey, everybody. Uh, there was a rumor going around, and this one got me. I, I'm not big on the rumors. I, I take them with a huge grain of salt. And, you know, but we're starting to get more and more rumors about the Fantastic Four movie. You know, they're talking about uh, uh, Adam Driver as Reed Richards, Jodie Comer as Sue Storm. I'm not the biggest Adam Driver fan, at least not for that role. Uh, Jodie Comer's fine. I don't care. Um, but today, the, the rumor going around today, and I don't know how realistic it is. You know, there's still just rumors. And, but the rumor going around today is... They're considering Antonio Banderas for Galactus. I don't know how I feel about that. And I'm not, I have nothing against Antonio Banderas. I actually like him. I, the, the root, when he was Zorro, uh, when he's, you know, as his other movies, I am perfectly fine with Antonio Banderas as an actor. Uh, I have no problem him popping up in the MCU. Um, I don't care if they make uh, Galactus Hispanic or Latin, Latino, or whatever you want to, you know. Um, it's the voice. I kind of felt that Galactus should have a deep bass voice, something like that, you know. You know, something deep and resonating and powerful. And that's not what I think of when I think of Antonio Banderas. You know, if they cast Kevin Graveau as the voice, I would have been, that would have been awesome. You know, because that's the sound of the voice you want for Galactus. Um, they'll fix it in post. I just have a hard time with the idea of Antonio Banderas uh, I, I can't even think of his voice off the top of my head. And it's not even the accent, but he does have a bit of an accent. So I don't know. That just seemed like a bizarre one to me. Oh, well, stay tuned for the Dan Wickland Show. Fran Drescher as Galactus. Really, J.D.? Really? If you're going to go there, well, you can't go Gilbert Godfrey because he passed away. That would have been awesome. Wallace Shawn. Wallace Shawn as Galactus. You know, inconceivable that he he could be an interesting Galactus. Uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dan Wickline Show here on The Experience. It is April 20... Let's say 7th. We'll go with the 27th. Uh, today is my national holiday. Uh, I, I even thought about not working today. It is NFL draft day, and I am ready, as you can tell by my hat. Uh, at 5 o'clock this evening, the NFL draft kicks off. Maybe it's 5.30. I don't remember which. But I'm going to be watching it. Carolina Panthers have the first pick. Everybody is certain it's going to be Bryce Young. We'll have to see. Um so I'm ready for that, but that aside, we're going to put that aside for now, and we're going to talk, uh, we're going to continue yesterday's discussion, creative project of uh, putting together a Jack of Hearts series. Uh, so we're going to do that, Bu Jack, building a Marvel show, finding Jack, I like that. Uh, let's see, what did I miss? Uh, JD for Galactus. If they... If they do go with Adam, I hope they cast Daisy Ridley as Sue. Oh, <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, hey, Lyle, good to see you. All right. 
we are going to jump. Let me let me catch you guys up on where we're at from yesterday. Um, I gave you a rundown on the history of Jack of Hearts. Uh, if you missed that, go back and watch yesterday's show later. It'll catch you up. Um, we did take one great uh, suggestion from uh, Leonard on who the bad, big bad of the series could be. Uh, he suggested Terak the Tamer, Terax, uh, which I like a lot, being that uh, Terax, um, he existed, that, that you could do him, bef you could focus on him prior to um, him becoming a Herald of Galactus because he had powers back then. Uh, Terex uh, originally was named Tyros. He's from, uh, he was uh, originally the dictator of a small city state called Landlock. Uh, it was also called Terran, which, be what his powers are, I'd rather go with Landlock because he has Earth based powers. Uh, he was on the world Burj, B I R J, which is. Uh, it's either the fifth or sixth moon of the gas giant Marmon. Uh, there's conflicting things. Uh, it was described as, uh, oh, football question. That's going to be a tough. Let me get through this and I'll come back to you, CJ. Um, it's described as a fifth moon in some of the writings, but like the handbook has it as a sixth moon. But it's a moon of the gas giant Marmon. Um, he ruled through the fact that he has this limited power. It's like he's like a mutant from Baja, uh, Burge. Uh, he has the ability over Earth. He's like Terra from the D, uh, Teen Titans. He has powers over Earth and rock and stuff. Um, it was, and again, it's a mu mutation, uh, but he was able to animate constructs of stone, which would then patrol the kingdom, those kind of things. Um, Lamar Jackson signed. Dude, you hit me up with that, man. I, I didn't see that yet. Okay. Uh, I hope he got a ton because he, for what they're doing to him there. But yeah, so I think Terax, the fact that he's got, I wouldn't choose the name Tyros. I just go ahead and use Terax. Um, the axe is something he gets later on, but I think we could go ahead and give it to him. Uh, I, I started, uh, when I was working at Bleeding Cool, I started doing sports for them. We were doing sports for a little while, and I was doing football. And uh, I even did a mock draft there. So I, I am big into sports. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, Terex the Tamer, we won't call him the Tamer because that's kind of something he gains. Uh, yeah, Terex from uh, FF211. That's who we're looking at as our, our bad guy for the series, and he hasn't been introduced yet. Um, and if they are going to get Galactus for uh, the Fantastic Four movie, if that is the rumor going on, then introducing Terex over here uh, before he gets uh, the power could be interesting. Terex is probably one of the better heralds for uh, um, Galactus, even though he's, you know, he's had the Silver Surfer and uh, Nova and Airwalker and Fire Lord and just a slew of uh, uh, different ones. Terex actually seemed to enjoy being a herald. But so I think Terex is a good choice. Uh, five years Ravens. Damn. Good job, uh, Lamar. Uh, real quick to CJ's question, Bryce or L Levis, your choice, Dan. Um, between Bryce and Levis, I take Bryce. I just have a real hard time with how tiny he is. I'm worried that he's going to end up hurt a lot. Um, I liked CJ Stroud better, but he seems to be falling down the board because of his uh, cognitive tests. I'm not thrilled with this draft class, and I almost wish the Panthers hadn't traded up. I would have rather them sit back at uh, nine and hope that Anthony Richardson came to them. Or Levis at nine is not a bad pickup, but he's not a first-round pick, so I guess they're going to go young. So, again, not sold on any of these quarterbacks, but if I got to pick one, 
I I'd have it down between Stroud and Young, and I don't know what all this is about Stroud. So we'll have to see what they do. All right. So let's get back into the story we're building here. And we were working on the uh, log line yesterday. What is he, only 6'3", Dan? Everyone's, uh, Bryce Young is 5'10", and under 200 pounds. So for a football player, that's tiny. Uh, I know I think everybody's tiny, but that's tiny for a, for a quarterback because you're looking at a line of, you know, your linemen are all going to be six foot plus, probably closer to six three, six five, and he has to sit behind them and scan the field. So then he has to throw over them and all of the six three, six five guys on the other side of the line who are all putting their hands up. It's not ideal. Short quarterbacks are not ideal. So that's why. Um, Uh, Doug Flutie never got drafted. That's why he had to go play in Canada first and then come in. Um, I mean, everybody thinks that uh, Drew Brees is short, but he was still six foot. So I don't know if sports, Dan, I'm the smallest dude in my family. <laughs> yeah, a lot, of a lot of batted balls in the future. He's going to have to be on the move constantly. So. Again, we're not doing sports talk. Sorry about that. <laughs> CJ asked, you know. Um, all right. So the log line we were working on yesterday, I tweaked it just a little bit overnight because I was kind of sitting there. Um, but let me put this out there and see if you guys have any tweaks or changes. Um, a rage-filled young man's entire life is turned upside down when he is accidentally endowed with incredible powers gets pulled into a cosmic battle and must make the ultimate sacrifice to save his mother's dying planet. I went with mother's dying over ancestral because I think um, it, it brings it a little more personal when it's just an ancestral. It's like, you know, England's my ancestral home. So is Germany. I don't have a lot of ties to either one of those. Um, so an ancestral planet, yeah, it turns out, hey, he's alien, but how far back? Where when you say his mother's dying planet, then you start going, oh, he's half alien, or he's part alien, and it's his mother's dying planet. That, that I think, makes it a little more personal. Um, Rage-filled, because I think we're going to have to at least give him that anger, that rage, because that's an important part of the character. Uh, because, I mean, his whole thing when he started was that sense of vengeance. He wanted vengeance for the killing of his dad. So, so, like I said, what do you guys think? You think we got a good log line there? Uh, Jay says, is there something other than turned upside down that could be used, or does that fit best to you? Um, I'm open to having it. Uh, it could be shattered. A rage-filled young man's entire life is shattered. Actually, shattered may be better. Hey, cool. What do you guys think? Shattered or turned upside down? Shattered sounds much more aggressive, more active. So... Yeah, I think you might be right. I think we, I think shattered may work better there. Anybody else have a better word, a better term? Shad, shadoom, shattered, shattered. I think he's trying to sing. Explodes. A rage of Phil's young man's life explodes when he is. No, I think shattered works better than explodes. Rolling Stones. Oh, it's just a shadow way. It's just a shadow way. Yeah, let's go with Shattered. Because his father gets killed, uh, 
Yeah. Explodes in chaos. Hey, Jenna, how you doing? Explodes in chaos. That's kind of interesting. It erupts in chaos. Let me think on that one. I'll, I'll, I'll note it down as possible. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead. Genre, format, I think we, we kind of all know that pretty much, right? We're going for a sci-fi series here. It's a cosmic series. So uh, Jenna says, setting up for what's in the box, doing all right. Yeah. Jenna, you and I need to talk. Got to figure out uh, how we can get so I can promote what's in the box better. But we'll talk about that later. So we're going to go sci-fi for the uh, sci-fi revenge. No, just straight sci-fi. And the format, we're going to go six issue or six episode series. Now we need our short synopsis. No, you didn't break anything, Jenna. I just don't want to use the same verbiage every time I promote the show. So, all right. So what do we need for the short synopsis? I think what we need is first we got to get an idea of how the series is going to work. Um, so this is what I was thinking, but there's some pieces here I'm missing. So you guys are going to need to put on your thinking caps or your marble caps, however you want to put it. So I've broken this down into what I think would be the six episodes. Okay, so episode one, we establish the character, the connection to his dad, the fact his dad is a poker player and he's got a, a, a fascination for armor. And we kind of set up the fact that there's a, an outfit there that he can put together. We need to introduce the zero fluid. And I think we go ahead and move it far enough that we get the people who attack the assassins that are taking out the dad, the death of his father, and the accident that leaves him scarred. And I think we can leave it at the end of the first episode with the accident happening, which kind of leaves it, you know, him screaming in pain or something. And it would be an interesting way to end that first episode. Hey, Kenneth. Yeah, Cosmic is in the cards. Jack of Art, Cosmic in the cards. Pretty good. Um, one of the things that I want to skip is that in the Jack of Hearts actual uh, origin, there's this group called the Corporation that are the ones that hire the assassins. It's all very Earth-based. And I think since we're going to put all of this together into one series, I think we can tie the people that attack into the main story and not have to have like two sets of bad guys. So this is, I've also been thinking about this too. If, if we're going to use Terex and his whole thing is, uh, is his uh, ability to manipulate uh, ground earth. Is, is it, is it called earth when it's on another planet? You know, the Terran, the, the, those are things that are Earth-based or Terran-based, but his ability to manipulate rocks and stones and stuff. I don't know if there's a better term for that. But if there is either his planet has eaten through all of their resources or there is something special about the soil that the, the earth of the planet Contraxia, then it would make sense if Terax wants the sun to go dead because he could then go over and mine the planet when it's empty. You know, it would just be 
a frozen planet. He can go and he could terraform, not terraform it, but he could mine it for all its resources. So I'm thinking that's the motivation, is that Terax wants basically the planet, but he doesn't want the peop people on it. He doesn't want to deal with the people. He wants the soil. He wants the earth that he can do something. Maybe, like I said, maybe it's the resources. Maybe he can do more with that. The resource, the uh, the earth on that planet. But uh, so that's that's what I'm thinking. And part of the story has the Contraxians trying to save their son, S U N. So they send out scientists and stuff to try to discover a way to save it. And that's how we get uh, Jack's mom on the planet, all of that. So I'm thinking that maybe Terax knew of this plan. Maybe he has a spy on a, you know, that, or maybe maybe he's made a deal with a certain group of Contraxians to actually save them and take them to his planet. So it would make sense that he would know about this. And as Philip gets close, Philip is Jack's father, gets close to creating the zero flu fluid that will save the sun, that he would send assassins in to recover the fluid or destroy it and take out Phil. So that I'm thinking that'll be the motivating force of him being killed. It just makes sense to me. What do you guys think? Uh, JD says, like someone on Contraxia knew that a person of incredible power was banished and they could save the sun, so he sends someone to hunt her down. Um, something like that. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the idea that they sent the scientists out and they uh the, the Terax had his own people follow and been keeping tabs as well. And now that somebody is close, they want to stop it and destroy all the evidence and stuff. So they're trying to keep in the shadows because they don't want, I don't know, sure there's some kind of conflict, but uh, that'll that'll wash out in the thing. But what we've got to come up with now, and I'm going to throw this out there, and then we'll take our first break. We're going to use Terax as the big bad, but we need the group that is somebody that attacks his dad. In the comics, the guy's name is Hemlock. And he is just a human assassin hired by the corporation. Now, I think we need someone else, something cosmic based. Maybe the, uh, what, what were the, uh, the, the guys sent in in, in the Avengers, the, the, the armored skeleton looking guys? They could be them, it could be Ravagers, but. That's that's the piece I'm missing so far. Who does the initial assassination? I would like it to be a group so some of them could die early, and then Jack has to hunt down the rest. So, all right, let's take our first break, let you guys think on that. If you can think of a, a cosmic mercenary group that could work out. That, uh, you know, it's got to be someone we can kill kill part of. It can't be like the Star Slant Jammers or something like that. So let's come right back, and we'll pick it up from there. Why was Princess Zelda sad after watching a bunch of YouTube videos? She couldn't find Link in the description. We'll stop if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's super easy. Click subscribe and click the bell when you do. And thanks for supporting the EXP. Comic Collectibles is a pretty straightforward show. You got Rex here, he sells the comics. And you got Rock and Robbie, he knows about the comics. And finally, John, he... Uh, well, no one really knows what John does. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's a great guy, but he just keeps showing up. 
Come to think of it, I don't even really know how he gets in here. Anyway, awesome comics, rare books, rarer signatures, slabbed books, and amazing cover sketches by Ken Hazer and others. Simple formula. You want the comics? You buy the comics. To sum up, Rex sells the comics, Robbie knows the comics, and John, who might possibly be a ghost. I mean, seriously, has anyone ever seen him show up or leave? Comic Collectibles with Rex and John, Mondays from 6 to 8 Eastern on The Experience. Comic Culture and Sales. Everybody, welcome back to the Dan Wickline Show here on The Experience. We've got a great lineup today. We are followed by Jenna and What's in the Box, and then Space Cadets. Uh, there will be no sketch up tonight as Mog and uh, Mel are off at a convention. So, hey, Triple B, glad you made it home. All right, so Chitari. Yeah, so they could be Chitari because they've been known as being just like foot soldiers. But it just feels like maybe, you know, there's got to be a better first villain for him to go up against. Now, we could do something where we, like, turn Hemlock into uh, the uh, the bad guy. Maybe he's part, you know, he was sent there by uh, Terax. Maybe Hemlock is... A, you know, like there's a, an apostrophe somewhere in there, so it sounds like a more alien name. So those are possibilities. But the Black Order, they've already used the Black Order. If I remember correctly, the, the, the Black Order is what uh, Thanos' group is called, right? So unless we move this to the past, which is a possibility, but uh, no, nah, I definitely want to kill somebody in it, so... Because when Jack when Jack gets his powers, we have to see how dangerous he is, you know. And I think the way to do that is to start the second episode with them rushing in, about to take him out, and he loses control and blows up the house and a few of the people that were you know in there. So we need the, one of the big bads to get away so he can still chase him you know, and figure out his powers and stuff like that. But I think we need a team of some kind. Sakaran, there we go. Annihilators? Don't know much about the Annihilators. Sakarans are actually who I was thinking of, not the Chitari. All right, we could definitely do something with Sakaran. Yeah, because they've worked for the Kree and stuff like that. So we just maybe make Hemlock into a villain from uh, Burge and uh, have him work with a group of Sakaran mercenaries. Yeah, see, now that's something we can work with, Sakarans. Annihilators. What are the Annihilators? Remind me what the Annihilators are, Jay. If I could just type it in. Dire Wraths. Ooh. You know, Jack of Hearts did show up in a uh, um, ROM comic. Annihilators, fictional team. Wait, are the Annihilators good guys? Yeah, I don't think we're going to send the good guys after him. Dire race. All right. Let's table this for now. But I'll put down the possibilities of Sakaran. 
diarrhea. Oh, that's right, shapeshifters. But do we want to use shapeshift to introduce a new breed of shapeshifters when the Cree or the, the scrolls are already there? Something to think about. Still a possibility, but we'll think about it. Jay says, be bold. Okay, well, we'll play with that idea. I have a feeling we're not going to be done with this. We'll carry this over to next week as well. But that'll give me some time to work on it over the weekend. But all right, let's continue through the the individual episodes as I see it. And again, you guys can tell me no, you think it needs to move different pace. But so we leave the first episode with him having been hit by the zero fluid. You see him scarred in pain, and you've got the troops moving in, ready to shoot him. You open up the next one with the explosion. You know, he's still screaming in pain, and he explodes, takes out the house. A couple of them get away, you know, and uh, you end up with um, maybe he gives chase. Uh, we're going to have to do something that explains him putting on the suit. He's in a basically he's in a chainmail suit. And it's going to have to be something his dad already owned. You know, like he had a collection of suits, uh, armored suits that were done up like playing cards. And that's the first one he comes across. It's going to have to be something organic like that, because otherwise it's just not going to you know, make a lot of sense. So. So let's say he comes across his dad's suit of armor. It's one of the few things that didn't get destroyed. Um, because once he's blown up, he's blown off his clothes. He's standing there like butt-ass naked. He's got to put something on. He puts on that. That's a tough one to sell. We're going to have to come up with a good reason why. But, um, but he does need to put it on early. That way we can sell the fact that it's still mutating and uh, why he has to keep it on. And so from there, he's going to go after the, uh, the aliens. We'll have to figure out why he goes after the aliens. Again, not something bad, but suit of armor could be set up beforehand as a cosmic artifact that can absorb contained cosmic energy. Um, it can be. I don't think we need to, though. The The fact that the, the way it was done in the comics actually kind of works here, too, in that supposedly the mutation that he's going through because of the zero fluid continues when he puts the suit on and, and warps that as well into something that will hold the, the, the energy in. Um, Yeah. Or I wonder if it's a suit that his dad was making with the idea that he would one day have to go to Contraxia to do this. And he just kept it hidden in the house by putting the uh, the jack, you know, the jack tunic on it and stuff. His dad cheated to get the suit from the race in a uh, card game. Oh, that's potential. Oh, I like that, Ed. I like the idea that we established the, uh, the dad's poker thing and that, um, that the wraith is actually one of his, or that whoever the assassin is, the head assassin is, is a member of the card game. Yeah. Hiding it because of the shield, shield confiscating it. That's another good possibility. All right. And, and I do plan on bringing shield into the third episode. 
well, at the end of this episode too, I want to, I want to, I think having him actually kill the assassin and it makes a lot more sense if he knows who the assassin is, you know, that does make a lot of sense. So he could be human, but he could be just established as a human. And then at the end of that, when all of this is going on, S.H.I.E.L.D. shows up and takes him into custody. And he's not angry at S.H.I.E.L.D. or stuff like that. And he's already killed the guy that killed his father. So he would go with them. And then in the third episode is where everything starts to change. He, As he's in custody, he meets Dr. Kane, who turns out to also be a contraxian. And she's the one that starts telling him the truth and breaks him out. So we have a, a prison break. Maybe we don't lay out everything. We just have her helping him escape. And then we get all the information in the the first one. And then we go back to the house. Or, or we find out that there is actually a ship from the assassin. Yeah, this is starting to come together nicely. He was a Tony fan and wanted to make his own suit and mixed it with his love of cards. I'm just throwing stuff at the wall. That's not bad. It's not bad. But the thing is with the suit is the suit only does containment. It doesn't have any special abilities. So it's not really an Iron Man suit. The fact that it's just chain mail that gets kind of morphed into being a containment suit is really its only purpose, is to keep the zero energy in. Now, it could be that his dad crafted it with the idea of being able to withstand the zero fluid. Or the zero, yeah. She was her father's contraxian contact and pretends to help Jack escape to get him on her ship to contraxia. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Um, actually, she's the follow-up. Uh, his mother was, but she died in a car accident. So she would be the one sent to check up and discover what's going on. So, or was actually sent on a different mission and got tasked to do it, that she was put in to infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D. And when her mom died, she started kind of keeping an eye on Phil as well. I mean, there's that's a pretty easy one to, to tie in. But yeah, she would probably have a ship. You're right. So that takes care of that. Um, yeah. So we get him out of space. We get him. I feel like the fourth episode's missing something, though. Is there another villain left out there? Ter uh, Terak sends someone else to try to stop him when he learns that his uh, group failed. Yeah, we definitely have to tap into some kind of a uh, some good group to fight. Wraith, Sakaran, something. That's 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 what I think we're missing. You know, just both of those are possible, but I don't think they give us exactly what we want. Um, maybe we have to create characters. You know, create create cosmic heroes or villains or bounty hunters, you know, our own version of Lobo type of thing. I have to scan through the Marvel stuff and see what's out there. Maybe some Silver Surfer issues to see who we can steal. Um, but yeah, I think by issue by episode four, we need to have him leaving the Earth. And by episode five, he needs to get Contraxia. And he gets kind of established. And we find out that there is... Maybe, yeah, I do like the idea of there being a group that opposes trying to save the sun. And they're looked at as, oh, you're the group that wants everyone to die. But instead, they're the group that's already made a deal with Terex to be picked up and taken away. And, he, you know, and this is basically him getting them to keep an eye on the others on their planet. Um, and, and I think we have to have an attack by the Bergians. I'm still not sure how to pronounce the name of the planet. B-I-R-J is a weird name. And then we don't get, and nowhere could I find 
what the, the, the people were called. So I'm just going with Bajurans. And then, of course, we introduced Terex. We're going to have to hint at Terex throughout all of it. You know, contacting, oh, we've got them. No, no, we don't. Um, shadowy thing. And then we get the big reveal in the fifth episode. And we see him standing there as a badass, like on a floating piece of stone, holding the axe. I think we can go and give him the axe now. We just don't give him the stone skin, or even we could do that, but we just introduce him at a lower power level than when he is Herald of Galactus. And then, of course, the final episode would be the big fight with Terex. And then the conclusion of it is him uh, deciding to sacrifice himself by going in and blowing up inside the planet or inside the sun uh, to basically jumpstart it. Um, that could work. Once inside the sun, he jumpstarts it, expecting to die. And then we, we end it with him floating in space and his eye opening. And that's how we end it. So it's like, oh, wait, he's not dead. Eddie says, Count Nefario and Madame Mass could have been hired by Terex to take out his debt. It, it could be. It could be Earth-based heroes or villains or mercenaries sent. And we could end up using Hemlock as a first round or something like that. Yeah, that is that is a possibility. And the Cabal and Mephisto <laughs> behind it all are at the lead of the at least the Cabal. Uh, that would get you shield. Yeah. Ooh, he doesn't explode. He channels all his energy into the axe and it restarts the sun, blows him clear. That's not a bad visual. That's not at all. I have to think on that one. Does his power work that way? Okay, it's a comic book movie. We can make his power work that way. I once read the original script for the Green Lantern movie. And in the first draft, they had Carol and Hal falling out of an airplane, plummeting to the ground, and the ring was empty. The ring was, you know, out of, you know, dead. And, uh, the power of their love recharged it. So, yeah. Dang, JD. Uh, the axe is listed as energy absorbing. Oh, nice. Sounds like King Kong's axe from Godzilla versus Kang. I like that. We're not going to kill Terax in case they want to bring him back. But, you know, you never know. They might want to kill him. But then if his if his axe survives, then maybe that increases Terax's power, makes him a bigger level threat if they want to use him again without him becoming a Herald of Galactus. There's a lot of potential there. We make it vague whether he survives or not. But I do like the, the axe thing. Like that a lot. Uh, all right, I need to write that down. <laughs> Uses Terex X to, to channel his energy and then throws it into the sun. Nice. I have two ideas on, on how to do the sun. One, I think, is more visually pleasing than the other. In this article that I read that talks about how to reignite a sun, it talked about the fact that you could split a, a sun, a yellow sun, into two red dwarfs and i think that would be cool 
if what he ends up doing is when he throws it in there, it explodes and pushes the sun into two, it basically splits the sun into half, and then and they push out a certain distance because a red dwarf doesn't give off as much energy as a yellow sun. So if it just turned into a red dwarf in the same place or, or a, a red sun, it would not give off as much heat. But if it then moved closer, it would compensate for the heat. And to have two suns, I think that would look badass to see the ax fly through the air and split the sun into two and have it change from yellow to red. Wouldn't that be cool? All right. Let's go ahead and take our second break. We'll do some uh, some uh, key issues, and we'll figure out when we're going to do the next part of this, uh, this creation project, because this is fun. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Let me know if you're enjoying it and want to continue it, and we'll be right back. Why was Princess Zelda sad after watching a bunch of YouTube videos? She couldn't find the link in the description. We'll stop if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's super easy. Click subscribe and click the bell when you do. And thanks for supporting the EXP. Comic Collectibles is here for you every Wednesday with AR Comics for two very important reasons. To sell you rare, one-of-a-kind comics that you'll love, and to confuse AR with old man talk. You see, Rex and John are... how should I put this? Um, ancient as the roots of the mountains. So every week, Rex and John fill in AR in yet another area of pop culture that he missed because he's too young just didn't have the time, or just really doesn't care about. It's a real public service they provide. Come buy some super rare and unique comics, while old men explain long-dead sci-fi shows to a younger man making that confused puppy face. Every Wednesday from 6 to 8 Eastern with Rex, John, and AR Comics. Comic Collectibles, on the experience. Comic culture and sales. Programming on the EXP is made possible by viewers like you, or your local comic shop, or that Kickstarter you backed, or the publisher you like, or comic industry professionals who want to share a message with the world. Really anyone who wants to advertise with us can. If you're interested in seeing a product you know and love, or are creating, or are publishing, or are involved with advertised here on the experience and having your message shared with our viewers please reach out by scanning the qr code below or visiting our website and using the contact form Welcome back to the Dan Wickline Show here on The Experience. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons that are down there. And, um, okay, let's see. Ed says, what about the timekeepers from Loki? They want the sun fixed. That works in the Loki series, but we don't know what's going to happen, but it's not a bad idea. So let's put that on the table. Uh, Jay wants to keep going. Triple B wants to keep going. He also wants me to do a Jack Ryder creep at limited run. I have one. I've actually worked on a, a Jack Ryder uh, a pitch. Um, Ed says, I want to see a fool killer show. That is such an underrated series out of my favorites as no one talks about. All right. Hey, if you guys are liking this, I'll be happy to do these more often. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep going with this one next week. Um, do some research, guys. Go out there and find right now. We know what we're missing. We're missing that that earthbound bad guys. You know, who who is Terax using? We got Terax as our main bad guy. Who who's he using on Earth? So let's come back here on either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll know more by then. And then uh, you know, let's see what you guys got. I'll come up with some more ideas and we'll go from there. But let's let's try to put make this. We'll make this an actual printed sheet. But okay, let's get into uh, the key issues. We're going to do this pretty fast. 
these are Rocket Raccoon. We're going to continue the idea of doing um, Guardians of the Galaxies as we're continuing this. Uh, Marvel Preview. Not, a lot of people don't know that um, Rocket Raccoon was first Rocky Raccoon, and his first appearance was actually in Marvel Previews number 7 in 1976. This goes for 380, 110 on the median, 35 on the low end right now. All of these are considered key issues right now because people are thinking that Rocket's going to die in the thing, so a lot of people are hunting these issues. This, to my knowledge, was the first Rocket Raccoon story, but it's not. The other one is. But this is the first one of the main mains or the main uh, comics. Incredible Hulk 271, 1982, first cover appearance, and then rename of Rock, Rocky Raccoon to Rocket Raccoon. It's also the first appearance of Lila and Walrus, who both will be in the movie. High end on this is 215, medium's 80, low is 20. There was a point that this was the first issue I ever saw that went down in value. That shows you how much Rocket Raccoon has come up. Because there was a point I remember looking at it, and it was down to like 45 cents for a, a, a high-end copy. So, But that was many, many years ago. Uh, Incredible Hulk 272 from 82. This is the third technical appearance of Rocket Raccoon. Uh, this was also the first time that uh, Bruce Banner purposely turned into the Hulk, and it's where the term Intelligent Hulk started. This is a uh, $30 high-end book, $9 medium, $3 low-end. Also, uh, what do we got? Oh, this was Rocket's first solo series from 19... This wasn't 85. I must have got that right. Maybe it was 85. Rocket Raccoon number one. You'll notice that the cover here is Mike Mignola. Uh, high end on this is 20. Medium's eight. Low end's $2. Uh, issue two of the same series. Yeah, I guess it was 85. Uh, high end on this one is $10. Medium's two. Low end's one. Then the third issue, look at those Magnolia covers. Aren't they gorgeous? This one even went more down in price, four, two, and one. And then finally, uh, he, here he is riding a metal stallion. Uh, the fourth issue, $10, two, and one. So good series to pick up. Guardians of the Galaxy, number one, this is where Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning restarted the team. Um, this is the origin of the team where it is led by Star-Lord from 2008. 35 on the high end, 9 on the median, 3 on the low. And then uh, the, their first appearance, though, was the Annihilation Conquest, which, uh, number 6, which is a high end of 60, median is 18, and low end is 5. Um, then uh, we get the actual origin of Rocket again. He's had his origin once or twice, but his origin was retold uh, back in 2019 in Guardians of the Galaxy number 8. And this one's easy to get. And then the 2014, we got the Rocket Raccoon number 1, his first, first solo series post-live action debut. High end's $5, medium 2, $1 on the low end. So those are our issues for that. Let me see what I missed in the... Uh... It says, I'm loving this. It's a lot of fun and interactive. That was the fastest hour of the day. I can't believe the show is almost over already. Yeah, this is going pretty quick. Uh, I know, and sometimes I wish Dan had two hours. That's a lot of talking. I do a lot of talking on this show. <laughs> but, um, all right. So, yeah, we will definitely pick this up next week. But put your thinking caps on, guys, you know. Uh, add to it. This is We're doing this together. So if you don't think Terax is the best villain to use, I think he works. It was Leonard's idea, but... Um, you know, who are the bad guys going to be? I do love the idea of whoever it is is planted into the poker game and that his dad has a bunch of armor on display. That would be cool. Like the, 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 the card playing room has all these suits of armor around it and he has them done up like the playing card pieces. I think that would be a real neat visual. So you have a king and a queen and a jack um, and other armaments and stuff. I think that would be a neat thing, and then that would be an easy way to explain it. But if you guys got a better way, another way, let me hear it. Um, I would love to have him have a good... Uh, I want him to have a good fight in each... The first, the third, and the sixth episode. No, first, fourth, and sixth. Second, fourth, sixth, that's it. 
So I want him to go up against whoever the assassin is. I want him, someone trying to stop him from getting off the planet. And I want someone, uh, and Terax, the big bad. I think that would all work really well. So, and we kind of do it in like story of X. Act one is uh, him discovering who he is, what he can do. Act two is the reveal of his mom, the real history and all that. And getting off the planet, act three is all taking place on uh, Contraxia and dealing with that. So, and the dad wins by drawing the Jack of Hearts in the game to finish his Royal Flush. That would be good. That would be good. I like that. Yeah, see, these are all good ideas. So, all right, we will uh, continue this, like I said. Uh, I haven't been doing the news, so we'll probably do a news roundup on Tuesday. We can jump back into this on Wednesday, and maybe we'll do a rewatch on Thursday. So that's a good possibility for a lineup next week. Uh, everybody, have a good weekend. Take care of yourselves. Uh, remember to watch, uh, if you're a football fan, watch the draft. It should be fun. And I will see you guys all next week. Have a good one. Do you remember what it was like when you were a little kid and you got a letter in the mail? Now imagine that letter was filled with information about your favorite shows, pop culture questions, links to things you're going to want to see later, and even sneak peeks at upcoming programming here on The Experience. That's what the EXP mailing list is. Every week, we send you sneak peeks, information, and all of the relevant links for all of the shows you want to see. Sign up now on our website or scan the QR code that's on your screen right now.